Raids a young boy and girl stabbed to death. Why don't the police catch this man? Well, haven't the police any clue? Yes. He always leaves newspaper clippings pinned on his victim's body. Don't you think it's strange that... He kills only after sundown. Two more tonight. How many has he killed so far? Twelve. No one's safe. Who'll be the next? What's the cops got to say? We'll have this maniac dead or alive in 24 hours. You can print that in your newspaper. What, again? You gave out that same statement three days ago. Hey, Bailey, do you know what he looks like? He's got the distorted face of a madman. He's about five foot eleven. When last seen, he wore a dark suit and a slouch hat. He is believed to be somewhere in the vicinity of the Post Road and the Reinhardt Estate. Still at it, Arthur? Yes, Uncle. You know, I haven't seen you since you read your paper before the Academy this morning. No, I intended to come to your room later. Tell me, my boy, what did the old Greenbeard say when you made the startling announcement that you planned to allow yourself to be buried alive? It came as a bombshell. Ah. I told him of my discovery for producing a suspension of animation and respiration. I told how, after injection of the fluid, life existed without the need of oxygen. I can see them bobbing their heads and waving their beards like a lot of old nanny goats. To be able to live without breathing, that's what it is. Old Adams challenged it. Yeah, of course he would. I can hear him. Of what possible benefit to mankind would it be for a person to allow himself to be buried alive? Exactly. And I reminded them of miners trapped in cave-ins, of sailors who had perished in sunken submarines. But my discovery will prevent these tragedies. What did they say then? Oh, they were disappointed because I wouldn't reveal my formula and present it to the Academy. Reveal it? Why should they expect that? When you refuse to tell even your old Uncle Dick? Oh, please forgive me, Uncle Dick, for not making you a confident in my experiment. There's always a possibility of failure. I want to spare you the humiliation should it by some chance fail. I understand, my boy. But I'd rather you told me. Did you hear that? Dagar. 
How is it that every time I turn around, I find you snooping about? Barn master, I've come to warn you. To warn me? There's cause for alarm. Reading paper states that the maniac has committed murder again. And this time, close to this very house. Has Mary returned home? No, master. Did uh, Sika accompany her? Miss Mary insisted on going alone. Oh, why is it that you two heathens will persist in allowing that child to have her own way? I begged, implored, beseeched you not to let her go out of this house alone. But neither one of you paid the slightest attention to me. Let me know the moment she returns. Yes, master. What's the matter, Mariani? You seem a little quiet tonight. Anything wrong? Oh, nothing in particular. You know, Tom, I read your article in tonight's paper about the maniac. It's enough to give anyone the jitters. Ah, we've always had those mugs. You know, I read a book not so long ago by Jack the Ripper. You know, the maniac that terrorized London? Must you keep on talking about that? I'll talk about anything I want to. Oh, your eyes are like dewdrops. <laughs> Don't be silly. I was going to tell you you have lovely ankles, too. But I won't. Why, the very idea. It's a perfect idea. You know, honey, remember that scene in the picture show tonight where the hero leaned over and whispered in his sweetheart's ear and said, I adore you. Then he kissed her. A silly lot of rot. You think so, huh? Well, I've been getting away with that silly lot of rot ever since Julius Caesar. And I'm one that doesn't think it's a lot of rot. Well, I do. That's because you never had a real moving picture kiss before. Here's where you get a break. The idea. Your face is flushed. You seem more animated. In fact, your breath's a little short. Now, you listen to me, Tom Hartley. What you did just now proves to me that you're nothing but a common roughneck newspaper man. I don't understand how I ever became interested in you. And I can't understand how you came interested in that goofy guy who spends 20 hours a day in a laboratory looking into electric light bulbs. Don't you dare say such things about Arthur Hornsby. He's a very brilliant man. I want you to know I'm engaged to marry him. All right, go ahead, marry him. All your children will be born with double lens glasses on. I hate you. Your eyes are like dewdrops. You know, Uncle, sometimes I think Mary's restless, unhappy. Oh, nonsense, my boy. All she needs is a little attention. You know, I'm hoping that someday soon, this whole house will be made gay, celebrating your wedding with Mary. I too look forward to it, Uncle. You know, my boy, I'm worried. I don't like the idea of you going through with this burial. I'm going too far to back out now. The Academy is sending down a committee tomorrow to witness the experiment. Is everything in readiness? There's the box waiting for me. I told the gardener to dig the grave tonight so as not to attract attention. Finished. Yeah. The I yes, I know. You're home now, so you don't have to talk to me anymore. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Martin, take Mr. Hartley back to the newspaper office. Don't bother, Martin. I'll walk. Walk? Yeah, this is one time the man's gonna walk back. Oh, Tom, please don't walk back. It's dangerous with that maniac at large. The way you made me feel, I'd like to meet that maniac right now. Martin, what would you do if you met the maniac? If I were to meet that the maniac, I would become famous. I would be the first man to fly without wings. <laughs> Honey, I still think your eyes are like dewdrops. I'll be seeing you. Martin? You meet that maniac, give him my regards. Good evening, Dagon. Good evening, Miss Matthew. 
Where's my father? He's in the laboratory. Thank you. Pardon, Miss. May I speak? Of course, Dagon. I want to warn you of danger. A man who kills is near. Do not leave the house at night, no matter with whom. Oh, I'm not afraid. Sika! Hello, everybody. Oh, it's Mary. Oh, Mary, I've been concerned about you all evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I told Zeke I was going to the theater. I was in hopes you'd stay home and read Adam's Life Among the Fossils. Most absorbing. Well, I felt like something a little lighter tonight. You don't object to you, Arthur. Of course he doesn't. I know this old house is dull at times, but tomorrow Arthur will finish his experiment and then he'll have more time for you. Yes, the experiment ends tomorrow with a burial. And then your wedding and a honeymoon in the south of France. Won't that be fine, Arthur? Oh, yes, yes, splendid. There's no getting away from it. Arthur certainly is a passionate lover. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Well, I'm going to bed. Well, I guess we're through here for the night, eh, Arthur? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Harry. I insist that you do not go into town again alone. Why, Father? Well, it isn't safe. There have been a lot of murders lately. Mm, what's that about murders? Oh, that's what Dagar wanted to show me, but I didn't want to tell you because I thought it might interrupt your work. Well, personally, I think the papers are exaggerating. Yeah, I'm not afraid. I'll do just what Martin says he'd do. He says, if I sees that old maniac, I'll become famous, because I'll be the first man to fly without wings. <laughs> I hear you. Get out of here. Get out. Oh, yes. Mary. Uncle, please slip the lock in the door for me. I'll attend to that, Arthur. Thanks. Sika! Sika, look at me! I warn you not to go into a trance! What have you seen? What do you know? Death is very close. Death is always very close. I thought you would. Now, Mary, be sure your windows and doors are barred. Secret does that. Good night, Mary. Good night, Arthur. Good night, Uncle. Good night. Mary, did your ears burn tonight? No, Father, why? Well, they should have, because Arthur and I have been talking about you. Something nice? What else could it be but nice? <laughs> Good night, Father. Good night, dear. Good evening, Zika. And did my little miss have a pleasant evening? Oh, not very. I was bored. You cannot fool Zika. Tonight I had the feeling that you were very happy. Don't tell me you've been going into another one of those traps. No. But Seeker sees many things. What else did you see? Trouble. Sadness. Death. Gathering all about, like clouds over the moon. Oh, don't, Seeker. You make me feel all creepy. Do not fear, little miss. There is much love and happiness for you. Zika, do you think my eyes are like dewdrops? They're very lovely. Mm -hmm.
What are you doing here? I heard you walking up and down, Master. Thought you might want something. No, I don't want anything. Perhaps you'd like the evening paper? No, there's nothing in the papers. Nothing but murder. Ah. Thank you. Good night. Sika, aren't you going to your own room? Tonight, Sika stays here. Oh, no. Go to your room. I'll be all right. Go on. No harm can come to you while Sika is here. Sika oh, was terrible.
happened to father? Call a doctor. Call a doctor. It is too late. He's dead. There, there, little miss. Call the police at once. <laughs> Hello. Operator. They give me police headquarters, quick. Hello? Idea. What's up, Bailey? Another murder. Okay, sweetheart, I'm on your side. Let's go. I got this thing all figured out. It's the maniac's job. I'll run him down. You never run down anything but your heel. I know a heel I ain't run down, but I'm gonna knock him down. What's the use? I'm only wasting my breath. Sure, save it. And when you meet the maniac, you can use it to gas him. Where's your phone? Right there. On your mug. Crestview 0191. Yeah. Hello, night desk. Hartley talking. Another maniac murder. Yeah, sure, I'm sure. What do you think I read in Normanac? I get this. Professor Reinhardt murdered in his own home. Yes, yeah, same clues. Newspaper clipping on the body. Yes, that's right. Police as baffled as ever, handing out the same bunk. Now, Mr. Hornsby, you just leave everything to us. I guess you know we get him, and we'll get this guy. If I ain't interfered with by this smug newspaper man, <laughs> as long as I'm here, nothing can happen. The word's right out of my mouth. What's that? Here, you. I'll take care of that. here in one night. Only a week since the master's will was read. And already they fight over the money like dogs over a bone. Why should the master have left his brother anything? Cared nothing for him. He never came to see him while he was alive. Perhaps he will be the first of the heirs to die. According to the master's will, the rest of us will inherit his share. I think your brother was an old fool. Just a minute. After all, he was my brother. That didn't keep him from being a fool. Think of it, including servants in his will. I'm disgusted. Well, don't be disgusted out loud. You don't know who might be listening. Thank you. I wouldn't put it past that heathen to poison us. Arthur, please try and keep him off the subject of Father's will. I'll try. I don't believe I can stand any more of it. You know, there isn't the fact that Uncle left the same amount to Dagar and Seeker as he did to the rest of us. I wish Father hadn't left me anything. You forget, dear, that Uncle loved you very dearly. You meant as much to him as though you were his own daughter. Arthur, 
Sarah and I have just been talking about Dagar and Sika. Oh, please, Uncle John. This is important, Mary. We think that you should get rid of Dagar and Sika at once. They're not to be trusted. Well, how can you say a thing like that? They've been in this house for 15 years. My uncle was very fond of them. I couldn't send them away. But do you realize that if anything happened to us, if we should mysteriously die, our share would go to these two servants. How dare you insinuate that Dagar or Sika would harm any of us. They're devoted to us. But my brother wasn't in his right mind. To think that he established a pension of $100 a month for his colored show. Oh, Mr. Arthur. Oh, Martin. I want you to meet the 8 o'clock train. Some gentlemen are arriving to stay overnight. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Arthur. Uh, excuse me. Oh, well, could I ask you a, a, a question that's been circulating my brain? Sure, Martin. What is it? About your uncle's will. He left me $25 a week as long as I live. That's right, Martin, as long as you live. As long as I live. That's what makes me feel so nervous. If it's any way that uh, you all can uh, legally take me out of this will, I will appreciate it. Oh, I see. You want to be disinherited, huh? Yes, in a way speaking. <laughs> Go on, meet that train. Oh, yes, sir. I just sent Martin down to the station to meet the committee from the academy. I've never heard of anything quite so mad, Arthur. Being buried alive. I'm sure that the authorities will interfere. That's why I swore you all the secrecy. I can't afford to have any interference. But I, for one, will remain in my room until it's all over. Arthur, I was in hopes of witnessing the demonstration. Uh, that's agreeable to me, Uncle. Thank you. Dinner is served. Put the car up, Martin. Come in and take care of the door. I'm going to be busy tonight with the master. And remember, no one in this household is receiving callers tonight. Oh, yes, sir. Because who was those, uh, well, gentlemen? Ain't they look like undertakers? I advise you not to be too curious. It's always best to keep your mouth and your eyes closed. My one regret is that my uncle, Richard Reinhardt, is not here to witness the experiment. This research was made possible by his great generosity. It is to his memory that I dedicate my formula, the Reinhardt discovery. Your sentiments are very noble. Young man, do you realize the possibility of disaster in so hazardous an experiment? And have you provided that the Academy be absolved of all blame? Yes. This paper is prepared in case of my death. We'll be in possession of our servant, Dagar. That should be about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn around, West. We're right here, will you, Palsy? Okay, Chief. Man, he just suddenly disappeared in the thin air. I suppose he just went out of uh, people to uh, kill, and naturally he had to uh, kill himself. Oh, Martin, what a detective you'd make. Listen, this Mary in? Mm -mm. Don't lie. Uh-uh. Come on, come on. No more gin. Well, she told me to tell you that she ain't at home. Well, I'm telling you to tell her that Mrs. Hartley's little boy Tom is down here to see her. She'll see me all right. Go on, go on, go on, go on. With your clothes on? Come on, I have a nice little bedtime story I want to no, tell you. No, Tom, Tom, really, I can't. I'm simply worn out. Worn out entertaining some other boyfriends, huh? No, no, of course not. Well, what came in under those hats? What do you suppose? Four gentlemen. Four? Yes. Not the four Marx brothers. Where are they? Every time a newspaper man opens his mouth, he asks a question. Correct, madam. Oh, I got a swell question to ask you. 
Come on, be sociable. No, Tom. No, really, I've got to go to bed. I'll, I'll pretend you've got insomnia and sit down for five minutes anyway. No, I can't. Come on. Really, Tom? Martin, doesn't your mammy want you? Hey, my mammy's down south. Oh, you win. Well, can I have a drink then? If Miss Murray says so, I'll get you a glass of of uh, his water. Who said anything about water? All right, Martin. Get Mr. Hartley a glass of water. And let the tap run for a long time because I'm a man who likes his water fresh. Fresh water for a fresh reporter. Oh, them eyes, them nose, them lips. And what was it you wanted to ask me? Something very important. But first, I want to know who do those hats belong to? Well, they, uh, they belong to me. You? Yes, you know, uh, girls are wearing mannish clothes now, and I'm going to have a suit made and wear one of those hats. No fooling? Hey, I bet you look cute at that. Come on, let's try one on. Oh, no, Tom. Here, put this one on. Let's see how it looks. No, I can't say I exactly care for that. Doesn't seem to fit, does it? Well, yes and no. Looks like it was made for a couple other fellows. I think it makes me look effeminate. Well, maybe you can get away with it. Here. Try it on this way. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now I've got to buy you a horse. Tom, really, it's getting late. Would you think it rude of me if I asked to be excused? Yes, I think it would be darn rude. You refuse to talk to me on the telephone. Now I'm here. I'm going to make up for lost time. Will you stop kissing me? Well, I could stop breathing. Sometimes I believe I hate you. Can't you make up your mind? Oh, what a swell wife you're going to make for me. I will not. Oh, yes, you will. Maybe I'd better refresh your memory. I'm engaged to Arthur Hornsby and I'm going to marry him. Brave on. You get out of this house and don't you dare come back again. All right. Here's your drink, Mr. Tom. Bring it yourself. Martin, show this person out. Don't bother, Martin. I'll show myself out. My pal, the taxi driver's blown the horn for me anyhow. Bye, honey. Bye, Martin. Martin, never let that man in the house again, as long as you live. As long as I live? Hey, I'm coming. Hey, take it easy, will you? Take it easy. I hear you. I'm coming. Hey, lay off that horn, will you? Hey, hey what's the matter? What happened to you? The maniac. Oh, another one. Push over, pal. Don't you worry, I'll take you to the hospital there in a minute. After the injection has taken effect, I'm to be placed in this box and buried. Now, please remember, gentlemen, it's imperative that I be revived after eight hours. Are you of the opinion that eight hours is the longest period of time you could remain underground? What would happen if you remained buried more than eight hours? I believe it's safe for me to remain in tome for eight days if necessary. It depends entirely upon the amount of fluid injected before the burial. Oh, uh, eight hours would be sufficient proof of the validity of your experiment. This is the restorative. My life depends upon the prompt injection of this fluid after the expiration of eight hours. It's to be placed in this cabinet. To you, Degas, I entrust the key. I shall guard it faithfully, master. Gentlemen, I'm ready. All right, Degas. Professor Andre, will you please administer the first fluid? Please tell me. Oh, communicating spirit, tell me. What of the young master? Should he risk the death sleep? Disaster. Death. We mustn't do it.
It's done. I was right it's when I said they were undertakers. Remember, you have seen nothing. Press the 0191. Night desk, this is Hartley talking again. The guy just died. Sure it was the maniac. You call the police. I'm still at the hospital. I gotta get right back there. Oh boy, what a story. Just nine o'clock. He is to be revived in eight hours. That will be at 5 a.m. Well, gentlemen, I suggest that we wait in the house. Do you believe this young man's experiment will prove a success? Personally, I am doubtful. You gentlemen will excuse me. I'll retire to my room to wait. Certainly, Mr. Reinhardt. We'll excuse you. Thank you.
How long has he been buried? Two hours. Do you think they'll be able to revive him when they bring him up? I don't know, but if anything should happen to the serum... He would die. You go back upstairs. I'll join you later. Maniac has murdered again. What's happened here? Professor Reinhardt's brother has been murdered. That makes two murders the many committed. Boy, what a story. Where's that phone? Look out, fella. Press the 0191. I must call the police. Relax, they're on the way here now. Hello, night desk. Hartley again. Another murder in the Reinhardt home. No, 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 besides the taxi driver. This time it's Professor Reinhardt's brother. Right. For some inexplainable reason, the murderer has chosen this house for sadistic acts of violence. We're all on the spot. Anyone who's liable to be his next victim. I was just coming to that. I want you all to get in the dining room and stay there till I lay my hands on this maniac. Come on, get moving. Go on. I'll make a note of everyone in the room. I was just coming to that. I'll make a note of all those present. Well, let me do the writing for you. I'll do the writing myself. What's your name? Professor Gregory Bogolsky. What? Professor Gregory Bogolsky. Here, you do the writing. I know the name of everyone here but this gentleman. Professor John Andre. Now listen, all of you. I'm going outside, and I don't want any of you to leave this room no matter what happens. You understand? Come on. Fred, you stay here. Don't let anybody in or out without an okay for me. Savvy? Come on, you fellas. Come on, up there. Come on out here. Come on. What's come. the matter with you? It's me. Oh, I thought you was the maniac, Chief. You thought, take these things off me. You're the dumbest clock I've ever seen. Oh, uh, my mistake. I forbid it. You hear me? I forbid it. Dagon, she may have something of importance to tell us. I forbid it. The man has murder in his eyes. Quiet, please. Dagon, for my sake, permit the seance. Will everyone please help Zika by 
taking the seance seriously. Mary, you don't believe in this junk. I do, Tom. Please try and help me. Professor. Professor Andre. If you'll excuse me, I'd rather not. I don't believe in this nonsense. Where am I going to put you? I don't do, care where you'd put me, just as long as you wouldn't put me next to a door. Martin, turn the lights out when I tell you. After the lights are out, do not put them on until I command it. Martin, turn out the lights. Everyone join hands. Our departed master is trying to get into communication with us. His spirit is sad. It's very restless. It is trying to tell us who the murderer is. of the murderer. It is a claim. I can't make it out. Sika, I forbid it. You hear me? I forbid it. Now I see the face. It's coming forward. It's the face of a madman. Stop! You hear me? Stop! The spirit will not be denied. Very plain. Oh, it's. Ah! Ah! Turn on the light! Turn on the light here! Turn on the light here! Mika, what happened? She's dead. the idea. There's been a murder. You mean to tell me the maniac came into this room, killed her and got away without any of you seeing him? The lights were out. What's the idea of the lights being out? You were holding a seance. Well, you picked a fine time for it. People being murdered and you're playing games. Got to figure out how the maniac got in. Bailey, this wasn't the maniac. There's no newspaper clipping. That's proof of it. And what's more, he couldn't get in this room without us knowing it. Everybody take your places at the table just as you were when it happened. Come on. Why don't you sit down? Because I don't want to. Ah, oh, he wasn't in the circle. That's interesting. I'll talk to you later. Are you all in your right places? We were all seated as we are now. The professor was standing there, Martin was standing. Where's Martin? <laughs> what was that? How did you get there? I don't know, boss. All I know, I'll come in here and making the door where there ain't one. Come on out of there. <laughs> All right, now. Who sat here? Well, what's the matter with you? Y'all dumb? Who sat here? What are y'all holding back for? I'll tell you. It was Dagar. You act as though that explained the murder. It does. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Bring him over here.
Did you see this man kill her? He was right next to her. Twice he warned her not to divorce the name of Reinhardt's murderer. When she insisted, he killed her. Sarah, don't be ridiculous. Never mind that. What motive would he have for killing his wife? You take care of your paper. I'll solve this murder. Go on, lady. Professor Reinhardt remembered him in his will. Dagon knew that his share increased with every death among the heirs. He killed my husband and he killed this woman. Is there anyone else who would benefit by this will? I would. Who else? My fiancé, Arthur Hornsby. Where is he? Why, uh, he's in Boston. Bailey, did it ever occur to you that with her husband dead that she might benefit by the will? Dagar was the first one to discover the body of my brother-in-law. The first one to be beside my husband's body. Officer, you can take my word for it. This man had nothing to do with any of the murders. Get out. It's an open and shut case. This mug was out to murder all of you. Put the cuffs on him, Dooley. Come on. I'm taking you to headquarters. You stay here and watch the body. Boss, he don't need no watching. Well, I've solved another mystery. This is certainly going to put a feather in my cap. I knew you were coming to that. You stick to me, pal, and I'll make you look like an Indian chief. Uh, come on, Dooley. Come on. I'll take a walk over here. Come in here. Hey, chief. I found these two guys following on outside of the house. Yeah? What are you two mugs doing here? We're watching the grave. Watching what grave? Arthur Hornsby's grave. Arthur Hornsby's grave? One of the heirs. I thought you told me your fiancé was in Boston. I can tell you all about him. Please, Aunt Sarah, you mustn't. You tell Aunt Sarah, or I'll hold you for aiding and abetting a crime. Tonight, these gentlemen buried Arthur. Oh, then another heir is dead. When was he killed? Arthur isn't dead. He was buried alive. Buried alive? Not dead? What's going on here? It was an experiment. Somebody's going to get hurt around here with this experimenting. Come on, you guys. Show me where this grave is. We're going to dig up Mr. Hornsby. If Professor Hornsby is to be removed from the grave, it is imperative that we have possession of the serum he has formulated to revive himself with. Take it easy. Where is the serum? In the laboratory. In a cabinet. The key is in his care. Come on, hand over the key. I have hidden it. No one shall open the cabinet but me. Take him down, get the serum, bring it to the grave. Okay, Chief. Come on. Where's the laboratory? If you will permit me, I will show you the way. Keep an eye on that bird. Don't let him get out of your sight. Come on, you guys. Show me where that grave is. All right, come on, boy. Let's get out of here. Please don't go, Tom. Stay here with me. Sure, well, honey, but why didn't you tell me of this experiment? It's all been so terrible, I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Show us where that grave is. Experiment, no? Buried alive. I'll get to the bottom of this thing. Come on, get moving. All right, where is it? There it is. All right, get busy digging. Get a hold of one of those shovels. You too. We'll find out about this thing. All right, let's get to it. Get that stuff. It will take a few minutes to prepare this serum. All right, go ahead. Will you remove the handcuffs, please? Nothing doing, Sultan. What do you think I am, a sucker? Do you care if I smoke? I don't care if you burn. Have one. Yeah, I'll have one. What kind of a cigarette is this? It is an oriental cigarette. Oriental, eh? See what's holding up Dooley. You go get that serum and bring it here. We'll be ready for it in a few minutes. Right, Chief. 
Faster, faster! Say, you, the chief wants that serum. Be careful, sir. If anything happens to this serum, it would mean the death of the young man. Ten to one, he's playing a half by now. So listen, Eddie, you better keep your eye on this guy. Honey, I've got to be getting out there. I want to get that story. I wish I could go with you. Honey, I wouldn't want you there when they take him up. Stay here, I'll be right back. I heard the scream. Something happened to Mary. She disappeared right in front of my eyes. Now, move out of the way, everybody. I'll open the coffin. Are you ready with the serum, Professor? I have it here. Give us a hand there, Mac. What's the big idea? I thought you told me you buried him. We did. Well, we laid him in this coffin. We brought him here ourselves. I'm going to hold you all for murder. Help him out of there. Grab onto him. Hold to him. Don't let him go. Get a hold of that guy. Go on. Here is the man you want for murder. Arthur! Are you trying to tell me that this is the maniac? Maniac is dead. Killed by Mr. Tom. Then who's this guy? This is Arthur Hornsby. The buried alive, Jink? He's the murderer of Professor Reinhardt and John Reinhardt and... and Chica! Committed his crimes in the guise of maniac. Professor Reinhardt suspected that the serums were a fake. And he killed his uncle when he went to investigate. He planned to kill all the heirs. I don't believe it. Here is the way he escaped from the box.
Then he crawled in through an old tunnel, which leads to the basement of the mansion. And up the stairs into the house, where through hidden panels he did the killings. Do you deny this? No. Because sooner or later, even you would know he's telling the truth. Take him away. Well, wise guy, I've solved another mystery. Okay, sweetheart. Compared to you, Sherlock Holmes was a traffic cop. Ah, uh, come on, let's get out of this. I am the maniac. Take heed. I am talking to you. And you. And you. If you dare tell anyone how this picture ends, if you dare reveal who the murderer really is, I'll climb into your bedroom window tonight and tear you limb from limb. I'll haunt you. Good night. Sleep tight. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>